I, I think I heard you say you were thinking about potentially moving to London at one point. I want to, I'd love to own something in London. I like One Hyde Park, but it's very expensive. And the reason that I like it is because it's the most expensive residential real estate building in the world. No one really lives there, mm -hmm. but you see these young Saudi kids drive their Bugattis and stuff. And every now and then one or two lights is on. That's very true. There's a part also in Stratford that has the same sort of thing where there's these amazing buildings near Stratford, Westfield Centre. If you've been there, you'd know what I mean. Um, they're literally right next to the shopping centre. And I sometimes have been in Ubers on the way back home from that way. And you'll see, you always talk to Uber drivers, they always tell you how depressing it is coming around, um, how depressing it is to come around um, that area and drop people off because literally they'll pull up to you know amazing buildings and there'll be hardly any lights on in the building at like a perfect you know prime time where most people are meant to be home and then you find out through some of the residents that a lot of those flats have been built by sorry have been bought by russian people other foreign people who just buy them and just kind of let them sit there maybe they let them out maybe they don't but no one actually lives there day to day it must be quite wild to be neighbors you know in a building with people that don't actually live there you're just there on your own and it, to me, it symbolizes the utter coldness and emptiness of having things. And I think there's a beauty to that. There's something very interesting about it. You know, that whole city of London really interests me. And I don't mean the city of London. I mean that city of London, that city within a city, which most people don't know about. But there's a great article in Vanity Fair, read it or don't. The point is, that whole area of Knightsbridge is very interesting to me. I'm actually going to break that article down next time I do a podcast, actually. I don't know if you remember that one, City of Inner City, because of Vanity Fair. I mean, One-Eyed Park is interesting because the, the banality and the hollowness of extreme wealth really shocks me. We, we tend to, and listen, we know the rich are doing crazy things, right? The mega rich, they crazy the yachts, the this, the mm. that, the Epstein stuff, a lot of it mm -hmm. not good, regrettable. We understand it. There's also an element I think people don't understand, and that's the banality, how boring, how it, it passionless a lot of people are at that level of, and that's always made me. You would uh, like to join the Knightsbridge crowd? I, I well, I, to, to observe, you know, they'll never let me in. That's the other thing I love about, I'm addicted to rejection, right? Since I'm six, I've been auditioning and have no, no. So they'll never let me in. But it's just fun to kind of look at. And you don't even want to be in per se because it's not fun. That's the thing. It's not really that fun. But it is funny to me when I look at, like, you know, the secrecy and how, you know, some of it really yeah, is really bad. And people are doing crazy things and they're overthrowing governments. And it, that's probably 10% of them. And then 90% of them, it's just they're fighting extreme, suffocating boredom. That's the truth. But I want some of that boredom. I want to be some of that board. And I think I've always had this kind of goal in my mind. I don't really, you know, apart from obviously, you know, buying a house for my parents and stuff as a thank you for, you know, putting up with me and my little brothers as we were kind of rampaging around the house, breaking everything, arguing all the time and fighting and shit. That's obviously a good way to go. I think when it comes to myself, I've never really had that much of a desire to have my own house apart from having one in London, just as a sign that I've had one, just to kind of represent all of the struggle, all the pain, all of the fucking suffering that you go through living in a city day to day. And I think the funny thing about London, probably similar to New York, it doesn't matter what level of the socioeconomic ladder you're on, the pain and suffering affects you all in different ways, of course, but you all suffer. There is no like living in a bubble. It doesn't exist. So even people who do live in one Hyde Park, they still have to commute through London. They still have to go through dodgy parts to hit restaurants, to hit bars, to go to work, to go to meetings. It's all over the place. So I honestly do think um, the only you know way to kind of reconcile that sort of shit and kind of make you feel at one <laughs> is to obviously... <laughs> It's to obviously get yourself a property and then kind of it will make it almost all worth it, you know, because you've got something to show for me. And that's something I want to do because I've, like, like I said, I've literally promised myself as soon as I get that property here in London, I'm leaving this fucking godforsaken city. And I'll definitely go move to like another city up north, like Manchester or something. Um, I'd probably do that before I'd move to another location in London because I quite like the area of London I live in. I don't think it's that bad, but I also don't want to stay here long term. But having a property here that you can let or that you can, sorry, that you can rent out, that you can put up on Airbnb is fucking priceless because, you know, 
um, rates here are fucking crazy. And if you offer it, you know, a little bit under market value, you have people, you know, queuing up to stay in your home year round. I've heard it's not as easy as it sounds to be a landlord and to have properties on Airbnb. You know, tenants are fucking awful. I go out of my way to be a pretty good Airbnb guest, I think. I'm the kind of person that will clean up all my dishes, that will take up that will take out the bin, that will separate the glasses. Like if I don't have time, I'll literally have all the glasses separated and shit. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna be fucking cooming all over the walls or pissing on the fucking walls or shitting on the walls. But I know some people do do that. So it's not as easy as it sounds to just kind of have a property, open it up, put up Airbnb and then collect the money. But still having that option, being that having the ability to do that is still a flex you know it's still a flex so um big up tim dylan big up tim dylan and again i also would love to live in london one time i think that one hyde park place he wants to live in is fucking gorgeous though by the way just to kind of show you what it looks like i'm sure most of you have seen it. it's just a massive fucking building there's also another one in in greenwich area next to the river that also is fucking awesome um to check out that people kind of live by and it looks fucking beautiful and it kind of overlooks all the water but one hyde park obviously you know it's literally next to hyde park which is basically our central park in here in london and it's right in the center of london you basically are a two minute walk away from bond street oxford circus all these amazing places and the properties themselves are fucking gorgeous as well so you can't really complain that people would go out of their way to kind of try and live in these public places let me see if there's actually can we actually see if there's one rooms oh look yeah there's actually one available there's one property in one hyde park actually available to check out on rightmove.com which is our version of you know zoopla or whatever you got out there in the states so this is one of the properties listed again not the best view but this is probably one of the properties listed here this is it's for 5.5 million Wide Hyde Park in Knightsbridge in London. Let's see what this looks like. I'm not too fond of this view. This view is a bit mad because you don't actually see the street. You kind of see another building, you know? Not much of a view there, but still. Um, I think it all comes fully furnished, I'd imagine, right? If you're paying 5.5 million, you better give me all this gaudy, you know, Saudi Arabian looking furniture. That looks pretty cool. You got some indoor garage. There's a Bentley there, right? So you can see how, you know, what kind of wealth we're talking about sculptures on the outside look at the reception wow the reception area when you come into one hyde park looks like a hotel <laughs> i don't know about that though what do you guys think would you would you like to live in a an apartment block that looks like a hotel hmm i don't know i'd kind of want it to look kind of homely it looks a little bit too can i check in your bag you know the, the it's ni nicely furnished good space nice size kitchen not the biggest again for 5.5 .5 million i want the kitchen to be a bit more substantial it looks a little bit looks a little bit tight in it looks a little bit tight the, the kitchen living space in the dining room area is very clogged up again the glass and the mirror the effects make it look really big it does a good illusion but it's quite cramped there's a lot of st maybe i'd get rid of a lot of the furniture there's a lot of stuff here i mean I, I might get rid of all this stuff it's blocking all the way there's not easy way to kind of walk through yeah it's a bit it's a bit gaudy the the, the interior design is very gaudy is there is there a pool built in or is this okay i think this is like i think this is all the communal stuff that you can share with people there's a squash thing there's a there's a there's a gym obviously that's fucking fantastic you can play golf inside there's a restaurant also in there you can basically stay in your room all day every day if you wanted to bathroom yeah 5.5 .5 million that is not worth it bro that looks kind of shit i'm not going to lie interior designed by candy and candy this one bedroom that's a one bedroom apartment that's 5.5 .5 million one bed apartment wow on the third floor um with 1110 square feet includes a very rare benefit of a 120 square feet storeroom which is fitted with wardrobes excellent ceilings and apartment is a net gross internal area of 989 square feet we understand it's one of the only two um one bedroom apartments in the building with a store basement storage beautifully designed reception and dining room i don't know man that doesn't look like a place that i'd want to live in i'm not gonna lie a one bedroom apartment for 5.5 .5 million sounds like a fucking nightmare to me i'm not gonna lie that sounds like an absolute nightmare i'd want something a bit more substantial but again i understand why tim dylan want to live there he's he always wants to be at a seat of luxury 
So it makes a lot of sense why he definitely would be involved or interested in living in a place that looked like that. It looks kind of good. Like, again, the interior design is the main thing that I don't like. It looks too gaudy. It looks way, 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 way too gaudy. Like it looks, it looks like somewhere Drake would want to live. You know, Drake has a similar taste to this sort of stuff. Drake likes this sort of shit. All this shiny glass, fake marble effect stuff, right? Like unnecessary lights, everything cramped. Every other wall is mirrored. Like it's just, yeah. And the kitchen also is super tight. Like that's a very stingy kitchen for 5.5 mil. That is a very stingy kitchen. You got to give me more kitchen than that for 5.5 mil. Like, come on, bro. Come on. You have to give me more than that. You have to give me more than that. You have to. You have to fucking give me more than that. That doesn't look that great. I'm not going to lie. Not for me. Not for me in the absolute slightest. I'm pretty much okay with that one. I'm pretty much okay with that one. 